two, one. Okay, so welcome in. So if you're watching this, you possibly might be finishing off elementary school, maybe in grade nine, or maybe you're just doing a review course on something to do with coordinate systems. So I'm going to go over this particular video and it will have the following topic. So I'm going to kind of introduce this coordinate system or sometimes called the Cartesian plane. So you can hear both from your teachers or maybe the X, Y axis. So all of those are basically exactly the same thing. So coordinate system, Cartesian plane, X, Y axis. So those are the three most common ones utilized. And I will kind of go over what an ordered pair is. So basically how you can take an X and Y value, how you can plot it, um, where you can find your origin on the coordinate axis, the four quadrants, and then how do we think about them in terms of the coordinate axes and they kind of go in counterclockwise direction. And then a short topic on taking those ordered pairs and then creating a table of values and then how you can actually plot okay, various points on a Cartesian plane or coordinate system or an X, Y axis. All right, so let's get ourselves started. So what is this X, Y axis? All right, so that's kind of the first question. So if you think back to um, uh, kind of all the way back to elementary school and then maybe in the beginning, you know, you were probably at some point asked, okay, to map things on a number line. So you would have a number line and that particular number line, for instance, you know, would have, I'm going to just put zero over here and then it would have positive values going to the right. So this is going to be going in this direction. So let me just input this in. And then you would have, and then so of course this continues on in this direction, and it would have negative values going to the left. So those negative values, of course, just keep going, okay, to the left. And again, you know, this just keeps going in that direction. Now, you can certainly plot um, just a point on this number line. So for example, if you wanted to plot five, you know, you can put five in here. If you wanted to plot minus three, you could put minus three over here and so on. Now with the Cartesian plane or the X, Y axis, what happens is we make things two dimensional. So this is one dimensional because it's just one line and we would call this line. So just because we don't always know what quantity we are studying. So we just use X. Okay for not knowing what we're going to talk about. But if you knew, for example, if it was volume or if it was mass, okay, if it was maybe height, okay, if it was pressure, if it was, you know, money, okay, in terms of maybe revenue, so you could put that. But if you don't know what it is, well, in math, we just decided to call everything just X and it's just a, kind of a placeholder until we figure out what we're going to be talking about. Now, this is one dimensional, okay? So that's my X axis. So we call this number line now my X axis. And now what you have is if you make it two dimensional, so this also is going to go in the upwards direction. So as I'm drawing it right here, so you take another number line and you make it now vertical instead of just horizontal. And you would do the same thing, except positive values now go upwards. So this would be one, this would be two, this would be three, this would be four, this is going to be five. And as you go down, this is going to be negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, okay, and so on. So you have two number lines, and you made this now a plane. So this is called, you know, a Cartesian plane, because you have two-dimensional kind of a surface where you can put things in or we call it a Cartesian okay plane or as I labeled in here okay, a coordinate system or two-dimensional coordinate system and it's two dimensions because now we have an X and now we have a vertical and again we don't know what that could be it could be some quantity but if we don't know we put a placeholder for this and we call this the Y axis 
So it's another number line just going in that direction. So now you know what your x and y axes is and how it looks like. All right. So that's the first thing. And you're going to be exposed to this quite often as you go through, most likely in high schools or possibly okay, as you continue on with math and maybe post-secondary. So what else do we have here? Well, what is an ordered pair okay, or basically a point? So if you recall, I said, well, we could graph one particular point if we have one number line. And, you know, I said, okay, so maybe we'll plot it at five, maybe at negative three, but that's just one. But now what happens? Because now all of a sudden we have an x-axis and we have a y-axis. So does it always fall on the x-axis? Well, not necessarily. So what we run into is we run into ordered pairs. So we create an ordered pair to tell people, okay, how we're going to plot a point because now it will have an X value and it will have a Y value. Now we don't always know what those values might be, but if we do, for instance, then we can actually plot a point. So for example, if I would give you that the X value was equal to three, and then that the y value was, let's say, equal to 2. So that now creates an ordered pair. So pair because there's 2. It is an order because we place x first and y second. That's what we like to do. Okay, so we have an order and it's a pair of numbers. So the first number 3, so as you can see here, if you wanted to put and plot this point, you would have this is your three on the X, and then you would be plotting your second one, which is your two, and that's on the Y, and you would think that like, okay, well, there's my three, and then there's my two. So how do I now create this point on this axis so it doesn't actually go on the axis itself as I have drawn it there on the green? Well, instead, what we do is we actually plot it out, and we're going to place this Okay, so this is going to go upwards to meet this across right there so that we can now plot our actual point, which is the ordered paired 3, 2. So 3, 2 is going to be right, whoops, right here. So this is going to be my ordered pair 3, 2, and we typically label it and that's the actual point that we would have. Now you can plot many points on this x, y axis. So if you had another one, so for instance, if I would have taken, let's say maybe it was negative, so negative one, and then maybe this was now equal to four. So what this ordered pair says is that the x value is going to be negative one and the y value is going to be four. So what we have is, okay, so negative one on the X is over here, and then four on the Y is all the way over here. So how would we plot this? Well, we would go all the way up, okay, until we find this four and all the way across, and now we can plot our actual point, and that is the point which is the ordered pair of negative one and four. And that's how you plot your points and you can plot them okay, anywhere depending on what the X value and the Y value is. Now, as you will see, okay, as you're coming along here, there is actually a very special ordered pair which we call the origin. The origin is where the two lines, okay, so the X axis and the Y axis intersect. So that happens right here. So this point right there is called the origin. Now at the origin, so that is called the origin, and it is the ordered pair 0, 0, because the x value is 0 and the y value is 0. So that's your origin on the actual plane itself. Now what else do we have here? Well, we have quadrants. So quad, if you maybe recall, okay, so quad is four. Now quadrants means that it, there's a division of four items in here. Now 
since this axis, as you look at it, if you would look at it as a whole on the page, you can see that what we have is we have basically four pieces. So there are four pieces in here. Now I'm going to clean this up a little bit for us so that we can kind of see. So now this is clean. So what you will have is that on the upper right corner, so you will notice that on the upper right corner, so right here, all the values, if you would be plotting, all the X values are positive on this side and all the Y values are positive on this side. So you'll notice that all the way around here, so this, when I say here, that means all of this, okay? So if I would go all the way across here, if you plot anything on that side, it's gonna have a positive X and a positive Y. And this is what we refer to this as the first quadrant. And we typically will use the Roman, okay, kind of um, numbers in here to represent number one. And then we go kind of counterclockwise. So counterclockwise, what we do is, now we go in this direction, okay? And we swing over to the next quadrant. So the next quadrant for us is going to be everything that lies in here, okay, in this quadrant. Now, what is that quadrant? Well, if you take a look, you will notice that it has negative X values, but positive Y values. And this we call the second quadrant. And you can now probably guess, you can continue this pattern. So this then goes to the next quadrant, again, in counterclockwise direction, where you will have negative X values and also negative Y values. And this is called quadrant number three, or the third quadrant. And finally, what we have at the end, so as you swing over to this side, now you are in the fourth quadrant, so that's the Roman number four, and in here you will notice that the X values are back to being positive, but the Y values are still negative. So those are four quadrants. So if someone says, you know, point is in the third quadrant, well, if it's in the third quadrant, you would say, okay, that I guess it must be somewhere over here. If they say, okay, the point is in the first quadrant, well, then you know that the first quadrant is going to be something over here and so on. So that's something that you are going to be running into and you should be comfortable with understanding these coordinate system quadrants. The last item on our agenda list is a table of values. So here is how a table of values look like. So I'm gonna just copy this. And what is this table of values? How does it relate back to what we have been talking about? Well. If you're going to start to create relations between two variables, X and Y, and for those in terms of relations, all right, so that was one of the first earlier topics. Maybe I'll put up a link up above there to the relations introduction video if you want to take a look. But when you have a relationship between an X and a Y variable, so in this case, my X and Y axes, which represent possibly some quantity, maybe like volume or mass, how do these things are related, we like to use table of values in here to actually start and distinguishing between how a relationship between an X and a Y comes in. But if you remember, these are just ordered pairs, right? So for instance, okay, if I wanted to write, okay, and whenever I have X is equal to two, Y is equal to three, we know that this relates back to the ordered pair of two, three, which we now can plot. So if I go back in here, you know, two, three would have been somewhere over here. So this is two, and this is three. And this is now creating a table. So it looks like a table okay, of values where my values are being entered for X and for Y. Now you can continue this. You can, for instance, have another relationship. Maybe there was a zero and I don't know, maybe a one, which would relate back to zero one as a point, which again, you can plot. So zero one in this case would have been somewhere over there. 
So it's zero on the X and it just goes up by one. So it's actually on the Y axis that I have there. So that's what you can see right here. And you can keep filling these out. So maybe this was five and maybe this was negative two. And again, keep in mind that this is just another ordered pair and you can keep filling these out. But this is referred to as a table of values which creates a relationship between an X and a Y. So how do they come in as an ordered pair? So that is it for this video. Okay, so that is the introduction to this coordinate systems. And I hope that you found it useful. Okay, if you like it, hit a thumbs up, subscribe. We'll see you in future videos. Bye everybody.